Okay, one more about homosexuality, and in this one I will be talking a little about abortion as well. Have you ever noticed how, in both of these cases, the opposition, those who can't stand homosexuality and or abortion, they don't just state the facts and the objectively true. I mean, if you want to be against homosexuality and or abortion, I'm not trying to demonize you. I'm not trying to tell you that you're wrong. It's not my stance. It's, of course, your choice to have that stance. But, let's try to just for a second strip all politics and all legislation from both subjects. Imagine just just talking about abortion. I think rationally we can agree that it is taking away a woman's choice. It is taking away her control over her own own body to deny her an abortion. And in the case of homosexuality, it is telling people that part of themselves, in spite of it not being inherently destructive, I mean, we're not talking about murderers, we're not talking about pyromaniacs, we're not talking about rapists. We're talking about people who want to have sex with people of their own gender, or perhaps both genders if they're bisexual. That is just, you know, without adding any further, without interpreting, that is what it means, and that is what those who are for abortion being legal, and those who are for homosexuality being legal and allowed, are arguing. To be pro-choice, as they call it, does not mean that you think that every single time an abortion is you know, possible, that it should be had. I'm not saying that Abortion hasn't risen a lot since we did make it legal. I will concede to that. But think about the ones who are raped. Do you really want a raped girl or woman to have a child that she might grow up hating? Do you really want an addict, a drug addict, to have a child, it might come out deformed, and she's not going to be able to take care of it. Do you really think she's going to take out that frustration on everything but that little defenseless infant? In some cases, in my opinion, it is the better choice to terminate the pregnancy. However, my point here is, have you noticed how the other side, those who argue against adoption and homosexuality being legal and allowed, try to turn it into an inherently destructive act? You're not... If you listen to the pro-lifers, as they prefer to be called, because they don't want to call themselves anti-choice. And to cover both sides, the pro-choicers don't want to be called pro-death. The pro-lifers don't settle for saying that you're robbing a sentient being of 
the potential of life. They don't want to say that you're stopping what could be a great person. And, you know, maybe it does. I, you know, again, I'm not saying that abortion hasn't possibly killed what could have been good, beneficial people. Once again, I'm not for the indiscriminate abortion. I'm just saying when it makes sense to, you know, have an abortion, I don't think the woman should be forced to keep the child. And a quick note, if you're pro-abortion, I really think you should be pro-adoption also. I really think you should, if you can, if you can manage it. I'm not saying you should, you know, strain your economy to the point where you can barely survive, but if you can, just my two cents, I think you should adopt. If you think that children should be brought into the world even if their parents can't take care of them, I think you should open your home and your heart to the kids who result from that. And big props to everyone who already does that. Anyway, they don't settle for saying that you're robbing the chance of this person's life. No, they go so far as to say you are killing. And there are those who present this case much better than I do. For example, the excellent XXX the Peach, XXX. And just, just briefly, at what point is this a life? You know, is a fertilized egg, is that life a blastocyst? You know, at, at what point is it too late for this to just be, you know, to technically, anyway. <clears throat> They go so far as to say you are killing life. And the irony is completely lost on the anti-abortionists who actually go and downright commit murder of abortion doctors. And in the case of homosexuality, they will say you are destroying marriage, you are destroying our way of life, you are destroying the nuclear family. They probably said the same about divorce, and that also had a lot of people living in misery. If nobody in the family is happy being in the family, if the father hates the wife, and the wife hates her husband, and the kids hate both of the parents because the parents also take out their anger towards each other, on the children because, you know, they could maybe... I mean, originally it was actually okay to hit children. And it was... well, for a while it was actually also allowed to hit your spouse. I read in a history book that it was actually once considered to be better to hit your spouse I guess as long as you didn't hit them too hard, then to say a nasty word. Okay. Anyway, they would live in misery and it would be much better if they could just get a divorce and the children could you know, spend some time with either or both parents just separate because they don't hate being in the relationship because they're not in the relationship anymore. And homosexuals, if you have some proof that they destroy, if you have some proof that someone being homosexual somewhere in the vicinity has destroyed a family that was otherwise actually happy. I mean, yes, I'm sure that husbands have left their wives for homosexual men. This doesn't mean that they were, you know, somehow infected or became homosexual. Most likely they were homosexual and they were just trying to deny it in themselves and trying to 
deny it from everyone else, hide it from everyone. And that actually means they weren't happy, and now they are. Probably, unless the relationship didn't work out, but that's another subject. I just think it's interesting to note. I mean, you can't possibly think that your case is that strong if you have to exaggerate, use hyperbole, to make an argument. If, if you state the facts, and you feel like the facts don't back up your stance, then maybe instead of inventing stories or perpetuating myths and rumors to support your stance, you should reevaluate your stance. I think you'll actually find that people appreciate, not everyone, but on the whole, it is appreciated when someone can admit, you know what, that thing I thought years ago, I've actually thought some more about it, I was wrong back then, you know. That's a good thing to be able to do. In fact, when people can't do that, we tend to stay in a really negative rut. You know, like, might be muddy, there might be spikes down there going up through our feet, and yet we stay there because we can't admit that was a misstep. We should not have stepped into that rut. We didn't know going into it that there were spikes and mud. We couldn't tell, but now there are. Maybe we should pull our foot back up, go down another path. That's it for this one.